Hey everyone, you are Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel where I discuss Tesla, electric vehicles and renewable energy. If this is your first time to my channel then hello and welcome. Take a moment to hit that red subscribe button that way you stay informed of any new content and it also helps my channel to grow as well. Today I'm going to help you optimize the settings for your Tesla Model 3 infotainment screen. I'm going to do that and much more right after this. Welcome back guys, and as advertised, I'm going to help you optimize the settings for your Tesla Model 3 infotainment screen. And to get to the settings page of your Model 3, press this car icon in the bottom right corner of the Tesla screen. So let's press that right now. And let's go through the quick controls to start with. So let's start with lights. I generally leave it on auto, let the car do its thing. This icon here is for auto high beam. I generally leave that on as well, let the car decide when to put that on or off. Uh, in the dark. This is for the front fog headlights. This is for the rear fog headlights if you've got that option. The next section is for adjusting the mirrors and the steering wheel. You can of course use the scrolly wheels to adjust the left and right mirrors. Mirror auto tilt is for when you're reversing. If you want the mirrors to point down when you're reversing, very handy if you're getting out of a tight spot. And the mirror auto fold is for when your car is parked and locked, uh, then the mirrors will fold in. Helpful for uh, shopping center car parks. You can of course adjust your steering wheel column with the scrolly wheel. You can fold the mirrors in manually as well. Window lock is for if you've got kids in the car for example, you don't want them to play with the windows while you're driving. You can have them on or off. And I generally put the display brightness on auto, let the car decide for me. And before I move on to the rest of the settings today, I just want to thank Joa for supplying me with their range of car mounts and also wireless phone chargers for the Tesla Model 3. These car mounts are designed to mount behind the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y screen. And Joa claimed that this product has 480 degrees of freedom. You can actually move it quite a little bit up and down like that, like that as well. And you can mount your phone any way you like. You can put it anywhere on the screen as well to your heart's content. They've also got a different car mount, which you can see from this shot here. You can actually hide the arm away behind the screen. So if I were to install it here, for example, you could certainly uh, reduce the arm like that and then hide it away if you don't want to see the arm, which is quite handy as well. And they've got quite a nice wireless phone charger here, as you can see. Looks quite nice with that wood grain. Does match the rest of the car. And there's a grip as well, so your phone doesn't slide around during your journey. You can have your phone in portrait or landscape like that, which is quite handy. And it comes included with uh, two USB-A cables and a USB-C cable as well for later model Tesla Model 3s and uh, Model Ys. And there's also a micro USB reader as well in the bottom left corner as a sentry mode recorder. Handles up to a two terabyte size micro SD card. So I'll leave a link in the description below for the car mounts as well as the wireless charging pad. If you're interested in buying these products, please use my affiliate link in the description below and also my coupon code TeslaTom, which will give you $5 off the phone mounts and a free 64 gigabyte micro SD card if you purchase with my coupon code at the checkout. All right, let's move on with the rest of the video. All right, let's have a look at lights. So I've covered headlights in the quick controls. I leave my dome lights on auto usually, unless I'm waiting around in a car park somewhere and I don't want to draw attention to myself, then I might put it on off, but generally leave it on auto. Ambient lights I leave on. They're the lights that can be found under the door handles and in the footwells. Auto high beam I leave on, as you saw before in quick controls. Headlights after exit I will leave on as well. They come on for a little while until you walk away from the car. And steering wheel lights I leave on as well. And for locks, they're the keys to your car. So I've got iPhones for both myself and Joy, as well as our key cards as well. You can also add more keys if you like in there. Window locks I went through before. If you've got kids in the car, you don't want them playing with the locks during your drive. Same with child lock. If you don't want them trying to open the door when you're driving, have that on. The walk away door lock is quite a handy function if you want to walk away from the car as soon as you arrive at a destination and the car will lock the door automatically for you. If you don't want this to happen when you're at home, I quite like having this exclude home ticked because we have our cars in the garage and if I want to retrieve something from the car or put something in the car at night, uh, it can be quite annoying if the car is locked already. So I tick exclude home and you might ask what is home? Well, what you do is close the settings and go to navigate, 
If you've not set home already, it'll look something like set home, like the way I've got set work like that. If you want to change what home is, then you can hang onto the button like that. And then you can reset your home address like that. All right, so back to the settings. Unlock on park I quite like. So when I've parked the car somewhere, all the doors will unlock. Just a nice feature to have. And then car left open notifications is also quite handy. If you've left your doors and windows unlocked for whatever reason, um, then it'll come up as a notification uh, on your app, on your phone. You can also exclude this function as well at home, which is quite good. Lock confirmation sound. I think it makes a, a horn noise, which I don't like, so I'll turn that off. And uh, close windows on lock, which is quite good. So if you've got them open for whatever reason, if you lock your car, they'll automatically close as well, which I've previously demonstrated in that software update. Display mode, I have it on auto. You can force night mode if you like. I like having it on auto. It basically goes from day to night mode at sunset and vice versa at sunrise. Brightness I've covered before in the quick controls. Screen clean mode is if you like to clean your screen like me, you can have it all black like that, easy to clean. And then hold for three seconds to exit this setting to go back to the settings. Languages, you can have it in different languages if you prefer other than English. A few options there. And the same with voice recognition as well. Time format, I have it in 24 hours, just the way I like it. Energy display, if you like to have it in percent, then have it on energy. Otherwise, have it in kilometers or miles. That's what distance is, kilometers or miles. Temperature is Celsius or Fahrenheit. And tire pressure, whether you like it, have it on bar or PSI. Driving wise, acceleration, sport versus chill. I quite like having it on sport, I must say. I'm addicted to the acceleration. Uh, maybe your passengers might prefer chill, it's up to you. Steering mode is how tight the steering column is. I like to have it on sport personally. And regen braking, of course, I like to have it on standard. I quite like having that one pedal driving feeling. You can have it on low as well if you prefer. And stopping mode, I must say, having spoken to many Tesla drivers, I would say after a while, most people get used to the hold function of the car. Basically, when you come to a traffic light or a stop sign or something, uh, just push the brake a bit harder and the car will hold at that position. Whereas with Creep, it kind of mimics uh, an internal combustion engine vehicle, automatic vehicle. And if you let go of the brake, then the car will just creep forward slowly. Roll, it's kind of like Creep, but less so. It's Some people have said it's more like a, a manual car when the clutch is not in. So the car does roll forward a little bit, not as much as Creep, but it does move when you have it off brake. Again, I personally like having it on hold. Track mode I won't go through today, but uh, if you do like taking it out on the track, there are options you can play with in track mode. If you've got that function in the Performance Model 3. Slip start I've never used, but apparently it helps you free the vehicle when it's stuck in snow, sand or mud. Now, autopilot settings I've gone through a few times in my previous videos with software updates. Uh, you may not have all these uh, settings if you don't have the FSD package. I'll just quickly go through them. Auto steer basically keeps to the lane when you're driving automatically. Navigate on autopilot, uh, you know, if you want it to go from destination to destination, particularly on freeways, it'll try, and I say try in inverted commas, it'll try to exit for you on a freeway. You can customize this as well. You can enable it at the start of every trip. Uh, you can have it on what uh, lane change mode you like. A Mad Max is kind of tries to get you there as quickly as possible. You can have it on average, you can have it on mild, you can have it on disabled where it doesn't lane change for you at all. Exit passing lane is basically, do you want to stay in the right lane or it, well, in Australia or in right-hand drive countries or in the left lane in left-hand drive countries or would you prefer it to go back to the slower lane each time? Uh, I generally like to have it in the slower lane uh, if it's not passing another vehicle. Require lane change confirmation basically means when the car wants to lane change, you've got to actually flick the indicator yourself. When I'm testing navigate on autopilot, I don't like to have this on. Uh, I want to see what the car can do for itself. And then lane change notification, I like to have it chiming uh, and vibrating as well uh, when it's changing lane for me. And then there are further settings for traffic light and stop sign control. Uh, this is basically, do you want the car to stop for you at a red light? Do you want the car to ding on a green light? Do you want to have the full self-driving visualization preview? So that's basically cones, traffic lights and bins. I think that's quite nice to have on the screen here. Summon, you can customize to your heart's content as well. And I won't go through that today too much, but I have done a video previously on Smart Summon, so have a look at that.
Now standby mode I've never actually used, but apparently it's uh, easier to get into summon if you've got standby mode on. Now set speed, this can be quite tricky. I'll try to go through this in some detail. So set speed is basically, do you want the autopilot to uh, set the autopilot speed at the current speed limit, because now the Model 3 can read speed signs, or do you want to set it at the current speed that you're traveling at? That's your option there. If you set it to speed limit, do you want it to offset from the speed limit? So for example, if the posted speed signs are 60 kilometers an hour, do you want it to go exactly at 60 or do you want it to go a bit faster at say two to three kilometers over the speed limit? Do you want it to go under the speed limit? Do you want it to take a percentage of the speed limit? Do you want to go at 66 kilometers an hour each time if you're adding 10% uh, or 110 if you're going at 100? So there are options you can play with there. I like to generally have it on exactly the speed limit. That's just a personal choice. Speed limit warning, so do you want the car to tell you if you're going too fast? Um, so you can have a display where the car will sort of, where there's a visual warning if you're going faster than the speed limit, uh, or do you want to chime as well when it's doing that? I personally like just having it on display, just a visual warning is enough for me. And again, do you want it to um, warn you when you're how much over? So are you, you know, are, do you want it to warn you only when you're five kilometers on, uh, or more over the speed limit? And similarly, you can go under as well. Do you want it to warn you when you're five kilometers under the speed limit? Put it back on zero. Or you can have an absolute limit. So if you're driving more than 85 at, all, at any time, then it'll warn you as well. I generally like to have it on relative offset of zero. Forward collision warning. I generally have this on late. I find the car very sensitive personally. Um, if you prefer to be warned earlier than that, then you can have it on medium or early. Uh, lane departure avoidance, I have it on warning rather than assist. Assist is it'll, it'll bring the car back into the lane for you if you don't have autopilot, by the way. Um, I just have a warning. I, you know, I think the, the steering wheel has vibrated a few times when I veered off the lane, so I, that's what I generally have. I leave these things on. I feel like I should have these on. Emergency lane departure avoidance, blind spot collision and warning chime, automatic emergency braking, obstacle aware acceleration. They sound like good things to have on. Automatic navigation is if you've got an event coming up in your calendar and you step into the car in the morning or next time you drive, the car will automatically plan a route for you. Trip planner, I've never seen this in action, but it does add stops at superchargers if charging is needed to reach your destination. Seems like quite a handy thing to have. And online routing, uh, it will take the optimum route, taking into account real-time traffic conditions. And this rerouting function is quite handy if you want the car to recalculate, if it saves you more than X amount of time. So for me, I like to have it on five minutes. You can have it up to 30 minutes. You can have it as low as one to two minutes, if you prefer. I'll leave it on five. Um, you can avoid ferries, you can avoid tolls. Pretty straightforward there. Allow mobile access, it's pretty straightforward for your phone or device. I've never actually pressed that button before for power off. I like to have the car on standby at most times. Uh, speed limit mode, so I guess this is handy if you've got a young driver or someone you don't trust fully, you can limit the speed of the car, and then you can add a pin number as well, uh, so they can't play with the setting, of course, if they've got possession of your car. Uh, sentry mode, I've done videos on this previously, this is basically the car's dash cam and CCTV function. Uh, you can exclude home, which is quite handy as well, if you don't want to record stuff in your home, it does take up the battery uh, if you leave it on overnight, you can exclude work where I showed you before in the navigation settings, and there are favorites as well you can play with. And to find out where favorites are, you just go to nav again, and you can see favorites right there. I haven't got any favorites, but basically if you choose somewhere on the map, you can actually star that location, and then that will become your favorite. So for example, where I am right now, if I just say click there, Roseville Chase, I can put star on, and I can name that favorite, I can add to favorites as well. So pretty straightforward. Now there's some more dash cam settings, save clips on honks, every time you uh, beep the horn it'll save it to your dash cam. You can format the USB drive uh, that you've got in, or the micro SD card from Jawoa. Uh, park assist chimes I quite, quite like having when I'm parking, see how close I am to an obstacle. Joe mode is uh, if you've got say a young child or a sleeping baby in the car, everything gets a little bit softer, quite handy to have. Security alarm, I'll, I'll leave on obviously if there's a problem, someone's trying to break into my car, this seems straightforward to have on. Now I generally recommend pin to drive, just an extra bit of security for your car, like basically having a pin for your phone or device, I think it makes sense to me. Glove box pin if you like 
to store valuables in your car, then put a glove box pin by all means. Cabin overheat protection, I generally like having on because it keeps your cabin at 40 degrees or less on a hot day, and that's quite handy. You can put it on no AC, apparently it uses less energy, but temperatures may go over 40 degrees. I assume if you put on no AC, the fan works, but for on, then the AC works as well. And data sharing, I generally have on as well to feed bugs and things to Tesla to make the car and the network better. Service, uh, wiper service mode, if I press that, the wipers go up, as you can see there, helps you clean the windshield. Owner's manual, pretty self-explanatory. Adjust headlights. Now, adjusting headlights, it says headlights should only be adjusted by trained service technicians. So I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm not gonna touch my headlights. Um, towing, quite handy to have if you're obviously needing a tow, or if someone is repairing your wheels. For example, if you've got a scratch on your rim, um, they may ask you to put it in tow mode. Uh, reset TPMS sensors, this is for uh, your tire pressures. If they don't look right, you can uh, factory reset them. Uh, wheel config, you can choose what wheels you've got. I've got the right wheels there, so I'll leave that alone. Notifications, you can uh, see what has happened today and previously, if any red flags have come up. Uh, camera calibration, this is for autopilot cameras. If you feel like there's a problem, mine seems to be working okay. And factory reset, I'm not going to touch, obviously. Everything's working fine. And software is where you've got your VIN number, your odometer. You can also find out what computer you've got. We've got the full self-driving computer here for autopilot computer. Homelink 5, Intel Atom infotainment processor. We've also got the full self-driving package, like I said, and also premium connectivity, which came with the car when we first bought it back in 2019. And see what software update you're up to. For some reason, I'm still on 4.11, even though 4.12 is the current version beats me. If you press release notes, it'll tell you what was in the previous release. And then software update preferences. If you don't like receiving software updates early, then press standard. Uh, I think most people would want a software update uh, as soon as it comes out. So most people have it on advanced and owner's manual is there again. All right, guys. Well, that is a rundown of the settings for our Tesla Model 3 uh, infotainment screen. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already yet. And uh, leave a comment below if you've got uh, any questions about the settings or if there are any features I've missed or you quite like in the settings menu that you'd like to share with others. I'd love to hear from you. All right, guys, stay safe. Until the next video, happy charging.